गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस हाउ ग्रेनुलोमा इज फॉर्म सो फर्स्ट वी शुड नो दैट कि ग्रेनुलोमा इज अ पैटर्न ऑफ क्रॉनिक इन्फ्लेमेशन दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड कि वॉट इज ग्रेनुलोमा ग्रेनुलोमा इज अ पैटर्न ऑफ क्रॉनिक इन्फ्लेमेशन सो हियर वी मस्ट रिमेंबर दैट इट इज अ पैटर्न ऑफ क्रॉनिक इन्फ्लेमेशन राइट टू अंडरस्टैंड द कंसेप्ट ऑफ ग्रैनुलोमा वी शुड नो कि वॉट इज द मैकेनिज्म फॉर ग्रैनुलोमा फॉर्मेशन टेक एग्जाम्पल ऑफ टी बी एंटीजन वेन एवर टी बी एंटीजन कम्स इन टू कॉन्टैक्ट विद मैक्रोफेज दे विल एक्टिवेट दिस सो टी बी एंटीजन इज एक्टिवेटिंग मैक्रोफेज and after that macrophage will be releasing cytokine which is called as interferon gamma and this interferon gamma will activate this will activate cd4 th1 cell right so cd4 th1 cell will again release cytokine interferon gamma so now you can uh, notice one thing in this granuloma formation this cytokine is playing most important role right so what we are seeing in this in this granuloma formation interferon gamma is playing most important role the most important cytokine for granuloma formation and for granuloma formation if you look at the t cell involvement so it is cd4 th1 cell which is most commonly involved in granuloma formation right so how interferon gamma will help in granuloma formation interferon gamma will help in lymphocyte proliferation and differentiation so lymphocyte proliferation and differentiation will be function of interferon gamma second important function of interferon gamma is to cause activation of macrophage see what i'm saying activation of macrophage to form activated epithelioid cells activated epithelioid cells so macrophage will be activated to form epithelioid cell how you will how you will differentiate macrophage from the epithelioid cell so here we can see that macrophage is a round oval cell this will be having eccentric nucleus and they will be having foamy cytoplasm right so what we have to remember they will be having foamy cytoplasm whereas epithelioid cell will be elongated elongated and nucleus will be the central right so this is how we can understand so see this is the uh, exact mechanism of the granuloma formation so from the beginning you can see uh, tb antigen was formed this was activating macrophage after macrophage activation interferon gamma was released which is activating cd4 th1 cell this will release interferon gamma again which will help in lymphocyte proliferation and differentiation and now macrophage has been converted into epithelioid cell so these two things very important lymphocyte proliferation differentiation and macrophage is converted into epithelioid cell so this is the basic mechanism of the granuloma formation to identify granuloma on histopathological section one should understand what will be the definition of the granuloma very important definition of granuloma is very important to identify histopathology of the granuloma formation so here we can see that what is the definition the definition says epithelioid cells in the center so see what i am showing you epithelioid cells in the center so these are epithelioid cells right so what i am showing you just writing e means epithelioid cells in the center surrounded by collar of lymphocytes see this what i'm showing you surrounded by collar of lymphocytes right so epithelioid cells in this center surrounded by collar of lymphocytes now you can notice these epithelioid cells due to their fragile cytoplasm they will fuse together they will fuse together they will fuse together and they will form a two different kind of giant cell they will form two different kind of giant cells when there is a peripheral arrangement of the nuclei peripheral arrangement of the nuclei like this i have shown you here 
so this is called peripheral arrangement of the nuclei or also known as horseshoe shape arrangement of nuclei horseshoe shape arrangement of nuclei so this type of giant cell is known as langhans giant cell so remember it is langhans the spelling is very important langhans giant cell so this is called as langhans giant cells right so here we must understand the spelling of langhans is langhans giant cell it is not langerhans it is langhans giant cell right when arrangement of nucleus is haphazard as you can see here this will be called as foreign body type of giant cell this is called as foreign body type of giant cell so this is called as foreign body type of giant cell right so this is the perfect description of any epithelioid cell or any granuloma formation so you can see there is a what i am showing you there is a central epithelioid cells right surrounded by collar of lymphocytes and then epithelioid cells are fusing together and they are forming langhans giant cell foreign body type of giant cell so this is the complete definition of the granuloma formation right now we will see what are the types of granuloma what are the types of granuloma so in types of granuloma first we will see the typical which we study in our uh, medical study education that is caseous and non caseous caseous and non caseous granuloma right so here what i want to say that tb characteristically they have caseous but remember they will have non caseous granuloma also right so what are the other caseous granuloma examples it can be histoplasmosis it can be histoplasmosis it can be coccidiomycosis right so these are some other example of the caseous non caseous granuloma we have to remember sarcoidosis we have to remember sarcoidosis hodgkins lymphoma right so non caseous these are so this is one broader outlook of the classification of the granuloma caseous versus non caseous now we are going to see some special type of granuloma some special type of granuloma whenever you see a uh, epithelioid cells in this center and you may find giant cells along with them giant cells along with them but there is no collar of lymphocyte no collar of lymphocyte or scanty so remember or scanty lymphocytic infiltrate or scanty lymphocytic infiltrate so remember this point this is a special type of granuloma this is a special type of granuloma where what we are noticing that no collar of lymphocyte or a scanty lymphocytic infiltrate is present so that is very important to understand that ki whenever you find no collar of lymphocyte or scanty lymphocytic infiltrate such type of granulomas are called as naked granulomas such type of granulomas are called as naked granulomas and naked granulomas are seen in sarcoidosis this is seen in sarcoidosis right so this is